Welcome to lesson 2 of atomic structure. In this lesson, we'll be looking at SLOs 2.1, 2.2.1 till 2.2.3. We'll be looking at different isotopes of hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, chlorine, and uranium. We'll be looking at how to draw the atomic structures of these isotopes. And we'll be looking at the importance of these isotopes in our daily life. Let's start with isotopes. What are isotopes? As we know that isotopes are atom atoms of the same element with same atomic number, but they have different mass numbers. Why are the mass numbers different? Because of the difference in neutrons. So an element can have uh, different types of atoms and these atoms have different number of neutrons, but the protons remain the same. So because of the same number of protons, the atomic number remains the same, but the mass number is different because of the difference in neutrons. So isotopes are basically atoms of the same element with same atomic number, but different mass numbers. We have the simplest element, which is called hydrogen. The at atomic number of hydrogen is one, and we have three isotopes for hydrogen. The names of these isotopes are protium, deuterium, and tritium. Let's look at the structure of protium first. Protium is the first isotope. Its mass is one because there is only one proton in the nucleus and the atomic number is also one. Let's look at the second one, which is called deuterium. We have addition of one neutron in deuterium. There is no neutron in protium, but there is one neutron in deuterium. So together, when you add protons and neutrons, you get mass two. So the atomic mass of deuterium is 2 and the atomic number remains the same which is 1 because so there's only one proton, there's no addition of proton, but there is addition of neutrons. The third isotope is called tritium and the there is one more, there, there is another addition of nitro, uh, neutri, uh, neutron in this and because of that the mass becomes 3. So together when you add Pro, uh, pro, protons and neutrons together you have the mass number which is 3 and the atomic number remains the same because of the same proton number which is 1 okay so we have three isotopes the first one is protium second one is deuterium and third one is tritium let's look at the isotopes of carbon we have two isotopes of carbon the first one is called carbon 12 and the second one is called carbon 14 what is the difference between the two we have six protons and six neutrons in carbon 12. So together, when you add six and six, you get 12. So carbon 12, the 12 over here, the number is because of the, because of the mass. When you add protons and neutrons together, you have the mass 12. And that is why this isotope is called carbon 12. In the second isotope, which is 14, the protons remain the same. We have six protons as we have in 12. We have the same number of protons in carbon-14 as well, but we have eight nitrogens. So there is addition of two neutrons in this. So <clears throat> because of the two neutrons, we have the mass which becomes 14. So that is why this isotope is called carbon-14. Carbon-13 also exists, but it is very unstable. Uh, and that is why we do not mention it here. Now we have few isotopes. Uh, of different elements. We have uranium-234, uranium-235 and uranium-238. All of them are the isotopes of uranium. The atomic number is provided already. The atomic number is the same, 92 for all of them. And you have to find out, what you have to find out, you, this 234 is a mass number, so you have to write it over here. Electrons remain the same as the atomic number. Atomic number is 92, so electrons are also 92. Protons remain the same. They are also 92. But for neutrons, you are going to have this mass number and subtract from that the atomic number. So from mass number, subtract atomic number, you get neutrons. So you have to fill this table by yourself. You have three isotopes of uranium. You have two isotopes of oxygen. There are two isotopes, oxygen 16 and oxygen 18. And there are two isotopes for chlorine, uh, chlorine 37 and chlorine 35. Okay, uh, we have uses of isotopes. The first choose is radiotherapy. What is radiotherapy? Radiotherapy is a treatment of cancer. So which isotopes are used for skin cancer? For treating skin cancer, we have P32, phosphorus 32 and strontium 90. Strontium 90 and phosphorus 32, they produce very less penetrating beta radiations and that is why they are used for treating skin cancer. 
cobalt 60 produces very strong gamma rays and that is why these gamma rays which have very high amount of energy in them uh, when they hit the tumor cells or the cancer cells they are used to kill those cancer cells so co cobalt 60 is used to kill the cancer cells by producing gamma rays and p32 and sr90 which is a phosphorus 32 and strontium 90 they're used to treat skin cancers the second use is tracer for diagnosis and medicine. What is diagnosis? To find out the cause, for to find out the disorder in the body. For example, if someone is having any problem, to, uh, to, to actually find out the main uh, disorder is called diagnosis. So how are isotopes used in diagnosis and medicine? We have some radioactive isotopes which are used as tracers. These tracers are mixed with medicines and when those medicines are provided, uh, they go to the tumor cells and they, they get distributed in the body, they go to the tumor cells and then they can be traced very easily because they produce radiations. These radiations then can be scanned by using machines like MRI machine. The second is isotope uh, of iodine. Iodine 131, they are used for treating goiter. Goiter is a disorder of thyroid gland and technetium is used to monitor the bone growth. The third use is archaeological and geological. Uh, how are they used? Isotopes are used to estimate the age of fossil fuels. So once the fossil fuel fuels are discovered, uh, they are made up of carbon, different isotopes of carbon. Uh, those carbon isotopes, they are then calculated, their percentage is calculated in those fossil fuels and with the help of that, we can find out the age of the fossil fuel. Okay, so carbon that is used for determining the age of fossil fuel and dead uh, organisms like plants and animals, that isotope is carbon-14, okay, and it's called, it's called radiocarbon, and the process is called carbon dating. Carbon dating is a process by which we can find out the age of uh, old objects or old fossil fuels. The third, uh, the fourth use is chemical in the chemical industry. How are they used? They are used, uh, the carbon radioisotopes are used in a chemical reaction to follow radiative elements during the reaction and they are ultimately used to determine the structure. For example, carbon-14 is used to label carbon dioxide. Whenever we have carbon dioxide and we want to find out the concentration of carbon because uh, in plants we have photosynthesis. Photosynthesis produces glucose. Glucose is made up of carbon. Uh, okay, and during this process we have the production of carbon dioxide with the help of carbon that carbon dioxide We can find out how much photosynthesis or how much glucose is being prepared during the photosynthesis in the plants And the last we have is the power generation isotopes are used for producing electricity uh, The most important ones are uranium-235 which is used in the atom bombs. It produces a lot of uh, energy uh, during the blast and because of the uranium-35. What happens during this process? We hit uh, the radioactive isotopes, very heavy radioactive isotopes by slow moving neutrons. So once a neutron is added to the isotope, it breaks. Once it breaks, it splits, it produces a lot of energy and that energy is then utilized. Uh, during the bombardment of uranium-235 with a neutron, we have production of two other isotopes, uh, which are barium-139 and krypton-94. So this is how the energy is produced. How is it produced? It is produced by nuclear fission. What is nuclear fission? Nuclear fission is basically splitting a very heavy radioisotope by, by hitting it with a slow-moving neutron. So once a neutron is hit, uh, the nucleus of that isotope is splits and produces a lot of uh, energy which is then utilized for producing electricity what is your task your task is to draw the structures of the isotopes of uranium oxygen chlorine and oxygen uranium chlorine and oxygen you have to draw uh, and carbon you have to draw the atomic structure of these isotopes as you have learned the three isotopes of there are three isotopes of uranium there are two isotopes of oxygen there are two isotopes of chlorine and for this you have to write down this is carbon so correct that uh, you have two isotopes of carbon which i have already provided in the video the next thing that you have to do is to copy down the table that i have given you which is incomplete and you have to complete that meet you in the next lesson till then Allah Hafiz.